Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Dr. Lori Nichols is the 26th president of the University of Wyoming and also the first woman ever to hold the position. Her first task when she came to Laramie last May helped guide the university through tens of millions of dollars of budget cuts, but also help UW look towards its future. Dr. Lori Nichols, next on Wyoming Chronicle. And Dr. Nichols, welcome to Wyoming Chronicle. Thank you, it's good to be here. You have been on the job here in Laramie since May, and you've had a tall order. Um, you came to a university in the middle of announced significant budget cuts. Let's start right there. Um, mm -hmm. tell, tell me, Dr. Nichols, the process that you've went through to engage the state, of Wyoming, the state of Wyoming, yet also help this university manage cutting $35, $40 million from its operating budget. Yeah, well, when I came in May, so I started on May 16th, and that was really the time when the governor had just asked the university to cut an additional 8%. And prior to that, the legislature had done the, what they called the penny plan, which was a percent and a half. So we had about 9.5% ahead of us. And so when I came, one of my very first questions simply was, where is the university at with the budget reduction? And I had heard that while they had dealt with the penny plan, so they had reduced the university's budget about $7 million, they hadn't started the the uh, governor's budget cut, which was $35 million, so sizable budget cut. So I just immediately, uh, went, well, to be quite honest, I went back to some of the work I had done earlier in a previous job. I started pulling some of the ideas and concepts of how you, you reduce a budget uh, by that large of an amount. And then immediately we started having town hall meetings on campus. So in my eighth day as president, I had a town hall meeting here at the university. And uh, we had such a large crowd, we ended up doing it twice. We had about 1,300 people come to that first town hall meeting. And I talked about the scope and the caliber of the budget cut, and then I talked about different strategies we could use to begin to reduce the budget in FY17. And the hard part was is we had six weeks to get that done, so we had to move fairly quickly. Um, and then I continued some uh, town hall meetings through the summer, so we had two more as the summer wore on so I could continue to give updates to the campus. And then at the same time I did that, I was also going out across the state, and so I would talk with constituent groups about our budget cut and get feedback from them as well. Um, tell me about the feedback that you were getting. Um, you have many different um, entities that have interests. Right. You have students, you have staff, you have faculty, you have alumni. Right. What sort of feedback did you receive from everyone? Well, as you can imagine, you get a lot of uh, a lot of feedback, and it does and it doesn't always agree with each other. In other words, you can have conflicting feedback. But you know, the thing I think that I, I heard consistently is make sure you stay true to your core mission of providing an outstanding education to the students who come to this university. And quite honestly, I was I, I wanted to do that anyway. So that, you know, the core mission of a land grant university is to provide access to the citizens of Wyoming and then provide a really good education when they come here. And so in all of our budget cuts, we'd always kind of use that as the litmus test. And we'd go back and we'd say, what does this mean to our education? And and we tried to stay very true to that. You've, um, I think, announced significant goals, though, as well. Yeah. You've um, commented, I watched you testify before the House Education Committee um, when you said, you know, our university is not at capacity, um, that my number one goal is to grow this university. And that's almost an oxymoron to me in this era of budget cuts. Right. Can that be done? It can. And I, I actually think it's a very important part of the future of the university. So the university right now sits just a little under 13,000 students. Um, and I really think capacity at this institution is easily 14,000. And quite honestly, I think we could probably push it to 15,000 students overall. On the Laramie campus, we have about 10,000 students. We have the capacity here for 11 to 12,000 students. And when I talk about capacity, I'm not talking about building a lot more new buildings or even adding a lot more staff or faculty. We really have that capacity in our residence halls and in our classes right now for the most part. There'd have to be some adjustments made, but I really do think we could grow our enrollment and not have to significantly up um, some of the things that we would need to, to fund or to, to pay for. 
Um, and why is that important to the state? Well, there's really two, two reasons, I think, why that's really important. One is that we need to generate more of our own revenue at this university. Uh, this state has been so wonderful to the University of Wyoming and, it, and has provided a great amount of funding for us over the years. But it's time now where we look at generating more of that ourselves and maybe relying on the state just a little less for some of the things that it has done in the past. And the second part is, is that this state needs more college graduates. It really does. When you look at overall the number of citizens in Wyoming that have a bachelor's degree, we're really quite low. And uh, we know that the economy is tied to an educated workforce. And so if we want to grow the economy, we need more college educated people. So the question becomes, are there jobs? for more bachelor degree folks in Wyoming? Well, it's a little bit of a chicken and egg. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on which one you want to talk about. Are there all those jobs sitting out there right now unfilled? Perhaps not. I mean, there could be some, but not, not to the extent we may be talking. But the reality is, is that when we have more college graduates coming out, then we have people who are also more likely to start more jobs in this state. So this is more kind of the entrepreneurial spirit of the state where we have graduates coming out who see possibilities and are those people that in fact are starting small businesses throughout the state or helping existing companies expand, which is a whole nother opportunity. But to do this, um, you've been through a process where there won't be as many faculty here at the University of Wyoming. There won't be as many staff. How many people have, either through attrition or otherwise, um, um, don't have jobs? How many, have there been layoffs, Dr. Nichols, or mm -hmm. have you handled it all through attrition so far? What's We've the strategy been? So far, we've used mostly attrition. Mm -hmm. So it's been by far the largest strategy that we've used. So as vacancies have come open, we've held them. And then eventually, many of, the, many of those were eliminated. And that is how we came up with our plan. But we are now in a process where we are also uh, rolling a retirement plan, so a early retirement separation kind of plan for faculty. And in that, we will pick up more uh, faculty uh, probably retirements. Now are we laying them off? No, but we're incentivizing them to separate from the university and retire a little bit earlier. So when this is all said and done, I've used the figure of about 400 positions that we will be down or that will be eliminated from the university when we're finished with this budget reduction. And I think I'm pretty close when I use that number. What's your perspective on how faculty feels about the process you've made so far in this budget cutting time? Well, the first thing I'd say is, you know, the faculty aren't happy about it, of course. They, they love this university. They've invested heavily in it. They're, they're great faculty. They perform, you know, they, they're good teachers. They're great researchers. And they want to see a university that's thriving and that's doing well and that's growing and, and you know, all those indicators of a, a really strong organization. So when this came, it was very hard for them. And, and, and I know that morale was low over the summer months as we were announcing the budget cut and then trying to strategize on how we were going to accomplish it. Um, I think now, if you would ask the faculty, they would still say the budget cuts are hard. I don't think that that story would change, but I think they would also say that they know me better because I've been here a little bit longer. Keep in mind, I had to cut the budget cut, you know, day one mm -hmm. of me coming. Mm -hmm. They're now getting to know me. I've been able to hire a provost, and they're getting to know our provost, and I think they have more um, assurance that the leadership is really watching out for the university and that while we're cutting the budget we're trying to do everything we can to protect the university and as I said protect kind of the core mission and then at the same time move forward with planning so that we've got a strong roadmap to lead us into the future. Let's talk about the future just a little bit relative to faculty. People always talk about salaries and the university's right. ability to compete with salaries. Um, and have raises periodically, and in a time of budget cuts, that those don't seem congruent to me. Right. Um, what is your thoughts on Wyoming's competitiveness, salary-wise, with faculty? So I, I think that's actually one of the greatest issues facing the university right now. Despite you know, with the budget cut, and we need to manage our way through it. But I think one of my great challenges as we really work with the budget is going to be figuring out how we can build in uh, salary increases for faculty and staff 
that keep us in a competitive position. Um, right now, the university has gone too long without a budget increase. And quite honestly, it is a huge problem in terms of retention and especially retaining your very best faculty. Um, and so we've got to figure that out. And I'm not saying we have to have one every year, but we certainly need to have some, uh, some dependable increases that we can build into our budget. And then from time to time, we can make sure that we're rolling out increases to the faculty and the staff. I want to talk to you also about quality mm -hmm. and the impact of budget cuts on quality. And before um, the holidays, Dr. Nichols, we sat down with Senator Chris Rothfuss, who is an academic lecturer here at the University of Wyoming, and we talked to him about his perception of budget cuts mm -hmm. and how they've not only impacted the undergraduate um, programs here at the university, but also the graduate programs. And I want to show our viewers what he had to say and have you reflect on that. I don't think the quality is, is really regressing at this point in time, but I think we're in danger of that happening in the future if we have further cuts. Uh, and when I'm saying that, I'm specifically talking about the quality of the undergraduate education at the university. Uh, we still have excellent faculty. Uh, they provide a first-rate, small classroom experience, and that's going to continue. The places where I have concerns, uh, even based on what we've done so far and, and would certainly suffer further in the future, would be the quality of our research, our, our graduate education, the ability to get federal funds uh, through research grants, because we're losing our ability to compete nationally for those top tier researchers. Uh, they're not in it for a shiny building. Uh, they, they need to be at a place that can provide the resources and tools for them to conduct their research, the support environment, uh, effective peer groups. And if another university comes along and offers them 20K more and has more resources available, they're going to say, I love Wyoming, I love Laramie, but I'm going to go to this other institution. Dr. Nichols, what is your concern about attracting top tier researchers and the quality of UW's graduate program? Do you share the views of, of Senator Rothfuss? Yeah, I actually think the Senator has some very valid points and there's a couple things he said that I'll, I'll um, kind of hone in on. The first is that ability to, to keep to attract and then keep really high quality researchers. So uh, the University of Wyoming has some very, very good faculty and some really top notch researchers who would rank right up there nationally in their fields. And I think one of the things that is going to be a challenge for us right now is keeping them with the budget cuts because that you know is kind of the message is, is that we're decreasing the budget, things aren't very bright here. And so they, they question their place here and then we're not offering salary increases. And so what you'll find is that other institutions, when they understand we're cutting our budget, will look for some of those top people to come in and make very competitive salary offers. We've already seen it happen. Um, and we've tried to the best that we can to come right back and do retention offers to them to try to keep those people here because we don't want to lose them. Uh, but we haven't been able to be successful in all cases. So that is, I think, very, very true, is that that happens. And then the other part is that as we have downsized the faculty, um, and we have had to do that in several departments, that critical mass of having you know, eight to 10 great researchers in essentially the same field where they really can feed off each other and build a strong, strong department and strong uh, research program together becomes weaker because we don't have that critical mass to offer anymore. And we've seen that happen in a couple of departments as well. Do you agree with Dr. Rothfuss's assertion that the undergraduate program really hasn't had the impact yet um, relative to budget cuts? You know, I would agree with mm -hmm. that. I'm sure people could find some isolated little things where we're, we're maybe not, you know, we're not doing exactly what we did in the past. But I do talk to undergraduate students and I just ask them, you know, can you feel the impact of the budget reduction? And almost, you, almost always I, I hear no. That they're, in fact, I even have students say, did we cut our budget? So, I mean, they're, really, I don't think our undergraduates feel the impact of this very much at this point in time. I think we've been able to hold on to really very good teachers that are just great in the classroom. We've been able to offer the courses needed so students can stay on track with graduation. Um, and I think in general, we've, we've been able to continue to do really what has been done at this institution in the past. Do you anticipate that an undergraduate education is gonna become a little bit more expensive? for students, either through tuition or fees? I do. I think it's going to have to be a little bit more. But let me just 
uh, give you some context for that, is that the University of Wyoming has the most affordable education of any land-grant university in the country. There's nobody else that's even close to the University of Wyoming. So we are so affordable in this state. And I really do think we're going to have to ask students to pay a little bit more. But within that, I'm going to tell you, we'll continue to be the most affordable university in the country. We talked about recruiting a little while ago and reaching that, that larger goal of maybe 15,000 students. Mm -hmm. Where are those students going to come from? Um, are they coming, going to come from Wyoming, perhaps students that would have went to a community college first? Are they going to come from the region when every other university also is starting to compete more for those same students? Yeah. Where, where, where's Wyoming going to grow? Well, they're going to come from a variety of places. You can imagine to grow that many, a couple thousand students, you're not going to go to just one place. So we'll have to have a a somewhat diversified uh, recruitment plan, which we're putting together. But I think if you're talking about in Wyoming, there's two primary places we see them coming from. The first is from community colleges. So we want to transfer more students from community colleges to the university, and we want more students to go on for a bachelor's degree after they've earned an associate degree from community colleges. So right now, that, that transfer, it, we get about 900 to maybe 1,000, but closer to 900 Annually. Tra transfer students mm -hmm. per year. There's no question but we, what we could be at 1,500 to 2,000 if we work that mm -hmm. much harder. We need to do a better job, though, of transferring those students here. I think that's historically been more the problem and we're working very hard on correcting those problems and making it very seamless and making sure when they come they're a junior and they can graduate in two more years and we're that is a big part of the future and then the other part in Wyoming is is that we lose some very good students in Wyoming to out-of-state schools um, and when you look at the out-of-state schools they're going to you know it's questionable why why there and not here um, and I really think that we need to do a much better job of attract or keeping what I call kind of that upper tier of students and convincing them that the University of Wyoming will give them everything that they can get at, at an, at an out-of-state school and that they will get uh, a great education at a much more affordable price. So really that recruitment of high school students that are prone to leave the state is another target market that we're really going to go after. One of the things you've um, remarked about when you came here is the university's poor financial reporting system. Yes. Um, that's changing now. Right. Is it changing at the pace um, that is to your liking? Are you able to get now information that you weren't able to get a few months ago? Uh, no, I'm not. <clears throat> so is it changing at the pace I want? Not at all. But is it changing at a pace that's realistic? Yes, mm -hmm. I think it is. So, you you know, you they couldn't get me financial data fast enough. And unfortunately, we're still living in the old system. So I still have not been able to get the kind of data that I'd really love to get to do what I consider to be a much higher level or a more, more sophisticated planning that I think this university really needs. But it's coming. So the good part is, is that we're working every day now at implementing the new system. We have bought the software. Multi-million dollar purchase. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are now in the process of, of getting that up and running and then now starting to build the FY18 budget in the new system instead of the old system. So I won't have much this year, but starting in FY18, it, it'll be greatly improved. Not only are you reacting to the pressures of budget cuts, but you're also planning for the future and initiating a strategic planning process. Right. In the next couple of minutes, tell us what that's about and how you're going about really having the university look towards its future in this era of tough economic times. Well, the strategic plan is really a roadmap for the university. Which the university didn't have when you came. Right, mm -hmm. correct. They've had them in the past, but it had lapsed and uh, had la lapsed a couple of years, and they really weren't working off of any plan when I came. And so, uh, so one of the first things I did, despite the fact we were cutting our budget, is I said, we've got to get after a plan, because really having a plan during a budget cut would have been really helpful. So uh, we started it anyway. So we kicked it off in September. Uh, we had King Alexander, the president of uh, Louisiana State University, come and help us kick it off. So that was kind of a fun weekend. And then we spent fall semester in listening sessions, just listening to uh, on campus, faculty, staff, students, about their thoughts about the future. And then I went out across the state and w did 10 statewide community sessions where we invited constituent groups, alumni, uh, and so forth. And we really talked to our state about the university. Is it hard to um, 
plan for the future when Wyoming has such a fixed and wonderful past? Um, you know, not really. For me, that fixed and wonderful <clears throat> past is such a great foundation to build on, but it doesn't necessarily just lead you into the future. You still need to plan to think about what does this university need to be for this state in the next five to ten years? So I would say that, you know, yes, there's, there, it's steeped in tradition and there's great pride and love for this university, which is wonderful, by the way. But to me, that doesn't substitute for planning for the future. You still need a strong plan. One of the things you've talked about is the need for um, improved dorms. Yes. Even though our dorms at UW are not at capacity. Right. T tell me about that. Well, I actually think part of the reason they're not at capacity is because we don't have new modern dorms. So it, again, this is a little bit of what mm -hmm. feeds what, but we do need to modernize our dorms here. There's no question about it. And uh, so I think we need a phase plan. We can't do it all at once. Um, but I think we need sort of a phase one where we'll take down the first, uh, the oldest dorms on campus, which is Crane and Hill and the Commons area in between. And then we'll look at updating the, the high rise buildings down the road in the next several years. At the House Education Committee that, that you and I were both at, you heard Speaker Harshman say that, you know, the dorms in Laramie are a little too expensive. Yes. Do you agree with that? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, for what they offer right now, they are, I think they are high. Um, when, and, and here's what I've said, is that we need to build some new residence halls. We need them to be suite style, which is sort of the rage now. If you go out and look at other universities, that's what they're building. We need smaller buildings that have like 200 to 250 beds per building, built in sort of a village style, so you kind of cluster houses, put a lot of amenities in them. And most importantly, you bring academics right into the residence halls, which is something that wasn't done 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. But that's the way new residence halls are being built now. And when you do that, you see a complete shift in terms of students' attitudes about living on campus. And you're, you're contemplating perhaps more private funding than in the past being utilized to do capital, significant capital construction projects on Laramie's campus. That's correct. So I'm not sure that that would so much be the case for the residence halls. The residence halls create their own revenue that we can pay back over time. So for that, it's more of figuring out a loan and then paying back the loan. But I think you're absolutely right. When, when you move beyond residence halls and look at some of our other facilities, we need to be doing more private fundraising around some of these projects. What's your vision, vision on UW's outreach amongst Wyoming, um, um, in and around Wyoming? Um, for people to be in Powell and get a four-year degree or um, be in Jackson and get a four-year degree. What's your vision for UW's Outreach School? Well, I think we need to continue to build it. Um, I think outreach itself is going to change a lot in the next few years, and that's mostly because technology is changing so rapidly. Mm -hmm. So how we do outreach, I think, will change a lot as we move forward. But do we need to do it? Absolutely. In our statewide listening sessions that I just referenced a minute ago, we heard about that so much, is that you know because the university is the only four-year public institution for the state, we have to be out across the entire state, and we need to be, um, you know, providing an education to, to students, and including non-traditional students as well. So we've really brought that back, and we've been doing a lot of talking about how much more do we do, how many more online degrees do we offer, and then most importantly, how do we partner with our community colleges and start taking four-year degrees out to the community colleges so that we can be offering degrees right on their campuses. And I think there is so much opportunity there. We have about four minutes left in our visit, Dr. Nichols, so I want to talk about some more issues as well. Wyoming is in an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted the university's ability to raise money? You know, so far, we've not seen a huge impact. So last year, the foundation raised $63.1 million for the university. It was their best year ever. They've never raised more than that. So they had a, they had a bumper crop year at a time when the state was actually experiencing an economic downturn. Now, this year will probably be the true test because we're, we've been in the, the economic slump just a little bit longer. So I think it'll be interesting to see if they can hang on to that 60 to 65 million or if, in fact, it comes down just a little bit. But so far, this year is actually looking pretty good as well. Concealed carry is an issue that is in the legislature right now. Yes. Your thoughts on whether guns should be allowed on campus at the University of Wyoming? Well, I think most people already know my view on that. I'm really concerned about it. I just don't think it's a good idea for a university campus like the University of Wyoming to have 
to allow concealed carry to be on campus. Um, you know, our number one uh, concern is providing a safe campus for our students, for our faculty, for our staff, and even for visitors when they come to campus. And I think that puts, having guns on campus, just puts a whole different dimension than what we've dealt with in the past. And the other thing that I think we have to think about is, is that we hold events here that bring literally thousands of people to this campus. Of course, football being a prime one, but basketball, other athletic events, and then a lot of things, commencement would be another one. And in those environments, it's very hard to secure. And I mean, it's really difficult when you have guns to, to have any kind of a, a security around it. And, um, and there's children on campus. I mean, there's just so many reasons why we're concerned about it. I'm actually really concerned about it because of the residence halls as well. We've had a presidential election since you began work here at the University of Wyoming. What is um, the impact, perhaps, on the university of a Donald Trump presidency? Well, I think the main thing is just all of the transition in leadership in Washington, D.C. that's going on right now as secretaries are appointed and other high-level administrative officials. And, you know, with each of them, they're going to have their own priorities, their own programs, their own funding, um, you know, priorities. And I think for us, it's just a matter of watching that and seeing how things change. And then with those changes, how that impacts what we've been doing in the past. I watched last week, as you did too, the demonstrations at UC Berkeley. Yeah. That the university then um, shut down the um, conversation of Milo um, Yiannopoulos that right. he was going to have on campus. But then the president's response was a threat to remove federal funds. Yeah. What was your reaction to that? Wow, I, I just thought I'm glad I'm not president there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's tough. That's, that's very, very turbulent times on campus because of course that campus, there's much pushback from the student body in particular, perhaps the faculty and staff as well, uh, just about you know who's in office and then some of the decisions being made. And then of course the, the university is trying to respond to that to secure the campus, keep it safe and so forth. It's a tough situation. I was watching it and I was really feeling for that president. Well, um, Dr. Nichols, it's been a pleasure to visit with you. <clears throat> I think there are great times ahead here at the University of Wyoming and I know that our state is really enjoying getting to know you. Great, thank you. And I just wanna say I'm really getting uh, enjoying getting to know the state as well. And I agree with you. I think the future of the University of Wyoming is very, very bright. Thanks for joining us on Wyoming Chronicle. Thank you. Thank you.